The game of hockey has evolved over the years, and so have the players, but that means the type of injuries and treatments have changed too. How does this advanced care get pro athletes and weekend warriors back on the ice? This is the science of St. Louis Blues hockey. So how long have you been a team physician? One of the benefits of growing up in St. Louis is being around the team since they were here in the late 60s. And for the past 26 years, I was able to work with the team and I'm supporting them every step of the way in everything they do. So how has the style of play evolved? Over time, the players have gotten bigger and stronger in all sports, but especially in hockey. The play is a lot faster, there's more hits, there's more physicality. I think one of the reasons for that is because the players have what they perceive as being better equipment. They're more equipped, they have helmets and face masks on now. They may take a little more liberty with how they treat their bodies and treat their opponents' bodies in terms of the hits they, that they impart. What were the most common injuries? For example, back then there was no demand that you had to wear helmets. The goalies were not even always wearing face masks. There was no rule for that up until the late 70s and early 80s. And so we saw a lot of facial lacerations. Just putting a face shield on that covers half the face has considerably lowered the risk of eye injuries from lacerations. Keep in mind, back then we had no MRI. So if a player had a knee injury or shoulder injury, you can have the physical examination, but you weren't diagnosing them with any degree of detail as you are right now. And so the treatment and the diagnosis is considerably different, even though the injuries may have been there back then like they are now. You mentioned no helmets earlier. That seems crazy to even think about. What kind of game changer was that for the sport? I think the biggest game changers in terms of equipment over the past several decades relates first of all to the mandatory use of helmets and a face shield. One thing that we talked to an older blues coach who played back in those days, they'll say, you know, Doc, we never had concussions when I played. And I responded, well, you had concussions, you just didn't know you had one. And so a lot of these injuries are being undiagnosed. How has orthopedic care advanced over the years to get our players back on the ice faster? I don't think the speed of play today translates into more extensive or more severe injuries. We see injuries of the same severity over the period of time. However, the treatment and the diagnosis is much better now than it was back then. For example, a player may have had a knee scope back in, in the 60s and 70s. He'd be in a hospital for five days. He'd have a three inch incision on the side of his knee. He'd be in a cast for two or three months. Now, this is a 20 minute operation with three little poke holes. You can walk on that day and you're back skating in a couple weeks when your wounds heal. So is this the level of treatment available for weekend warriors too? The vast majority of our patients are weekend warriors. They're average people who have average jobs, but they're very dedicated to their job. They're very devoted to the sport or the activity that they want to do. And so we use the same techniques of diagnostic uh, testing, of arthroscopic procedures and reconstruction on the weekend order, just like you would for professional athletes. As you can see, the game has changed a lot over the years, and so has the care. And that is the science of St. Louis Blues Hockey.